also a metatheatrical free writing class. So it's both at the same time. So you're really getting your money's worth, especially because it's free. <laughs> um, I'm Susan Laurie Parks, and this is how it goes. So the action of the play is we're going to set the timer, and Drew's going to set his timer, and we're going to work for 45 minutes. Okay? We're all going to work for 45 minutes. And those of you online, because we're streaming live, they're going to be working for 45 minutes. And then comes the dialogue part of the play where we talk about your work, your creative process. Okay? So it's not so watch me work, it's not me, it's you. Your work, your creative process. And those of you who are watching online can tweet us at uh, what is it? At watch me work SLP hashtag new play. I read it. Yeah. Watch me work <laughs> SLP hashtag new play. If you have any questions about your work or your creative process. Okay? So we're gonna set our timers, we're gonna work for 45 minutes and then we're gonna talk and then uh, everything will be uh, revealed. <laughs> I promise. I promise, okay? So yay, so let's, uh, let's begin. The work session begins. Oh, that's quiet.
right, very good. That was, or my earplugs are in plastic. That was the action of the play. Now we're gonna do the dialogue part in which um, you all are invited to ask questions or talk about your work, your creative process, what you're working on. If you have some things that are going really well, you can share them and perhaps that will inspire us all and make us all jealous. And if you have some things that aren't going so well, you, you can also share those and maybe we can help you find some solutions, maybe. Anybody have any questions? Answers? something that's that I struggle with. Oh really? Um, yeah. Oh, how good. So, oh, yeah, yeah that's it's great. great. Okay. And um, sometimes I see it myself and sometimes I, I have a really good friend who's like anti sentimental, anti like exposition, anti so she and I work really well together because she's like, yeah. But being on the nose just means that you either you're it could mean a variety of things actually. It could mean that you're either stating something that's really obvious, um, it, it could be that your characters are speaking their subtext. Like, I'm really angry at you, and I'm never, you know, they're, they're just saying how they feel as opposed to acting it out or doing other things. Or, um, this is, I mean, the, the play I worked on with you, yes, the, um, the, the plagiarism the one. The three women, yeah. Right, it right. was very much, it could also mean um, that that play was um, led by the ideas and politics rather than being very character driven. Um, so it can mean any number of those things, and it tends to mean something about being obvious. Um, and I'd just say the fact that they responded is a good thing, period. Yeah. But, and, and they could also be very, they could be like my friend who just has no patience for sentimentality or like right. things that are, you know. Okay, right. that helps. I would agree, is that, is that, does that sound like, because I, you know, I, I'm never sure what these things mean. Because um, I don't, you know, but but that sounds that that sounds appropriate. So when someone, um, so are you cool with that? It's like now that I know what it means. I feel yeah, because I kind of got it a little bit, but I just wanted someone else to explain uh -huh, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I just a little bit. <laughs> Do you wonder what is that kind of what Google said, or what you, you know, that a little called? bit, just something that was too apparent. Apparent, yeah. yeah but that yeah. makes more sense. Uh, but I, I like what Ricardo was saying yeah. about about it's, it, your your play is led by issues instead of by characters. I think that's a really helpful because maybe in your question, maybe not. I'll offer unsolicited advice. Maybe in your question is so I get a note like that. What do I do? Right. A tad bit on the nose. Okay, thanks for responding, folks. You know, thanks for reading my play and having you know comment, writing me back, whatever. But now what do I do? Then you know. So maybe I like what Ricardo said about it being. And your play is issue based, driven. You know, it's about, you know, let's just pretend. It's about homelessness and how homelessness is bad. It sounds more like an op 
bit, he's less like a play, right? So you, you want to get inside the characters and have them explore what's going on with them. So your play can become about people with issues instead of issues driven by people. Instead of your characters are mouthpieces for issues. Maybe, but maybe that's not. We're just no, reminding you. Know, to kind of get to the heart of your characters, maybe make it less about the issues and more about the Because of a play, I mean, and that's always a trick. Because they ask you, like, so what's your play about? They expect you to boil it down to, a, you know, a, a line, you know. And I always feel like that's helpful for marketing, you know, to get the word out and stuff. But a lot of times people look at you funny if you can't do that. Well, you must not know what you're writing about. But I always have the feeling that if you can do that very easily, then maybe your play is just about that. You know what I'm saying? So.
is what we do. This is like so much about like what we do, right? We, uh, and when we're not together, well, we're alone. And so we put the time in. And I'm a real big fan. I don't have this a, a timer, which my son broke, so it really doesn't work. But it's more on like a prop now, right? But um, I'm really into getting that. Um, other than your phone, you get an egg, uh, a kitchen timer, you know, cheap thing, right? And you set it for maybe 15 minutes. And you say, I'm just going to write for 15 minutes. So you kind of allow yourself the time to work on it. Because a lot of times when we're in a funk, it's because I don't think I'm any good, I don't think what I'm writing is worth it, I don't know what I'm doing, but you get the chatter, right? And if you just set your timer for a small amount of time, 15 minutes, maybe, um, and you do it, say, I'm going to do it every day. I don't care if it, I don't care if it's good or not, I don't care. I'm going to sit in front of my yellow pad, use the yellow legal pad, or my typewriter, or my computer, or my composition notebook, and I'm just going to write for 15 minutes. I'm going to, I'm just going to, I don't know what my play's about, I say write a play, I don't know if it's any good, I think it's about a man with a cap that looks like a Union Jack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But you have to put the time in. Because the worst of moods, you know, it, it can stop you from putting the time in, but if you make a commitment, you're just sitting down and putting the time in, and you are, you are working with it. You're embracing your bad mood. You're not saying I'm not in a bad mood. You're saying I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a funk, and I'm trying to, you know, kind of deal with it. Okay? So that's why we do this. That's what this is all about. So when you go home, if you live in, 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 uh, in this, you go home, you watch it online, and you can sit. Yeah. 45 minutes. You can just turn on your computer, and we're here. And you can just like, okay, I'm, so you're not alone. A lot of times being alone and doing it is hard. So we get uh, energy from each other. And I get a lot of energy. It's good. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes, Carl. I have a career-ish question. A what? Um, just about... So I've, I've had a, a collaboration that's gone completely awry, gone, oh, it's just bad. Okay. Um, and it's with the director and this musical the one I mentioned that you were. before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, you know, things are happening with lawyers, everything's going, as, you know, fine. Lawyers. But yeah, it's not, you know, oh. it, it, that way. But when I've spoken to the director, one of the things that's been told to me yeah. as you know I'm a young playwright right. and you know it's how wonderful it is that he you know chose me that he commissioned me to do this work and and uh, you know he had a choice of playwrights with more experience and all these things and my body of work isn't impressive um, so I've heard that from him and I know that's emotional manipulation and it's like right. rankest form it's like very clear to me right however in um, in working, in, in, in soliciting advice yes. from uh, people I respect and mentors and colleagues, yes. I've heard that as well. Like, you're a young playwright, it's going to be okay, Like, and, and I think it's partially to calm me. Yes. But I'm starting to wonder, when, when, when in, on, uh, on the good green earth do I stop being a young playwright and, right. and somebody that can right. be taken seriously? Right. Um, That's, yeah. I, I guess which is which is um, a, a larger kind of career work question. Right. Like what is that line? Right. What, and and how do I um, how do I make that how do I make that transition myself? You know, yeah. to, to to like let people know that's actually not how I expect to be treated. Right, 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 right. right. While still being an emerging playwright. I you know. know, it's like that's I don't such know if that a great makes sense. question. I just don't want to yell. Okay. Maybe I will, because I can. <laughs> That's the great thing. You know, I don't have to, but I can. So, so you all heard Ricardo's question, right? He's a um, number one. Yeah, you know that when someone says that as a way of justifying their less than appropriate behavior toward you, they're full of shit. Number one. There's no, I don't care, you know, one should, you know, try to treat everybody with respect, right? And that the justification of, I could have chosen from so many 
many people, so you're lucky that I chose you to stomp on, is the thing you should have chosen somebody else. You know, that's, so, that, so you know, but you know that's it. Your friends, sure, they're trying to help you just get through the day. And that's, so you understand that. So first person is inappropriate, and we know that. Second folks are your friends and trying to help you get through the day, so we understand that. But the question really is you, right? Yeah. So when do you start feeling like you deserve better treatment? You can start that right now. Right now. Right now. And because what happens in any misstep, you can speak up about, and which will make you, you know, not the most, maybe not the most popular playwright, you know, but you're, you're someone who stands up for himself and believes in his work. You know, and not that you did anything wrong, this is not to say that, you know, we all learn and, and, you know, all that kind of thing, but you could start that right now. Right now, from this moment forward, you are an emerging writer who deserves respect. Period. Because we all are. Because every work coming out of us is an emerging thing. So everything I write, I'm an emerging, it's emerging. Here it comes. Oh, you know what I mean? It deserves respect. You know, because people can say, well, you've never been, they've never performed your work in Dutch. So, you know, or, well, you know, we could have chosen 80 people, but we chose you. You know, it's, so I, you know, I, I'm a writer who deserves respect. You can start that right now. And every step of the way, you have to, what you have to do is turn on your, you have your bullshit shockproof shit detector, your built-in shockproof shit detector like Hemingway talked about. You have that for your own work, right? Yeah. You've got that. That's how you can do a rewrite. You've all got that thing in you that goes, oh, this line isn't right. Oh, this character isn't happening. You've got to cut, got to rewrite. You have that for your own work. Turn it on when you deal with other people. Woo! That's inappropriate. Excuse me. And there's a nice way to say, excuse me, but I don't think that, that doesn't sit well with me. You know what I mean? And maybe they'll do it anyway. And they will, maybe, sometimes. But at least you stood up for yourself. Okay? All right? So, you know, and so that in, at the end of the day, you can say, at least I recognize that that's inappropriate, but I said something and they did it anyway, but at least I stood up for myself. And next time, maybe I'll choose you know, differently. You know? Okay? But you, number one, you didn't do anything wrong. It happens, it happens to you, it happens to me, it happens to everybody on every level. There's always somebody who's gonna say, well, this is your, oh, this is your first time on Broadway. You've heard that. Oh, this is your second time on Broadway. Oh, you're working with these people, and so they don't, blah, 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 okay, fine. I'm gonna do my best work. I'm gonna stand up for myself. I deserve respect. At the end of the day, I know that I did my best work. And I was kind and gracious to whoever I interacted with. Very important. Yeah. At the end of the day, don't let them take that away from you. Don't turn into who they are. You know what I mean? That's what we worked about when we did a class together at NYU. And at the end of the day, you don't want to replicate that behavior. You want to be kind and gracious. And so the new emerging playwright who's going to come and maybe be your intern, you want to be nice to her or him. You know, the new emerging, you know what I mean? You don't want to pass on that behavior. Because it's like parenting. We learn that bullshit from people from our, our you know, elders or whatever, and then we pass it down. It's like bad parenting. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, uh -uh, no. He can take that, or she can take that back, wherever they got it, you know, they can hold on to that. You're going to pass on something better. You know? Okay? And I know you will, because I know you, you're wonderful. So, but shit, you know, shit happens. You didn't do anything wrong when I just I think repeating that will be to myself will be helpful. <laughs> yeah, yes. It happens to everybody. Not nothing bad. You know, no no bad on you. You know what I mean? They're who they are. They gotta be like that for their whole for the rest of their life. That's who they are. Yeah. What are you tell? I told my students, uh, this past semester students, there are a couple different kinds of people. There are uh, assholes and there are people who are full of shit. Right. Now, at one time or another, we're all full of shit. Because you got it. Okay. But the cool thing about being full of shit is that it passes. Like, today I'm full of shit, but it will pass. Here's the cold one. Asshole, right? An asshole is an asshole. That's what they are, right? So learn to distinguish between assholes and people who are full of shit. Every once in a while, you're going to run into somebody who's a wonderful person who happens to be full of shit on that 
given day or for that project or whatever. But an asshole is an asshole forever. And like my son says, no, no, no thank you. Okay? Damien. Damien. On. Damien? Yeah, that's oh, Damien. right. Okay, Damien behind the camera. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions about? No. <laughs> Damien, no. Damien has all the answers. <laughs> We're good? We're good? We're done? No internet people today? No internet people today? All right. Uh, all right so they are online. They are. They are online. They're watching us. Listen, if you have a question right that's now. Right. Well, how's it wasted? How's it wasted? What else can we say? Uh, what else about the play, about the colon? You want your action to move along like a colon. Like, this shit moves in a colon. You don't want it to be like that. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? You don't want it to be like that. And not move. You know, you want it to kind of move along, move along, move along. You want your characters and the things and thoughts to be absorbed Absor like, exactly. by your audience, like exactly. that by the Dwarf Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's it's right. And um, we kind of just broken down, consolidated. <laughs> I was cool this morning. He was like, Wee! I'm like, he's like, cool, cool. So we farted a lot this morning with our mouths. I have nothing else to say. Anything else? No? Okay, well, next week we will be here. Hopefully, you guys will be here. Next week we'll go online. We need to end some questions because we'd love to talk to you. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. 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 No. No? Okay. I thought it was, and that was just Darren. Darren, Darren. Darren. Darren, Darren, Darren from, from, he should come in. Where is he? I keep telling him to. Where is he? He's downtown running somebody's campaign. Yeah, I know. I ran into him on the subway. He's just a fact. I know. He has like dress sense. I know. He's like, he's like, ta-da. 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 Ta-